one German diesel engine threw out the rulebook entirely, while competitors perfected radiators, coolant circuits, and water pumps, Deutz engineers eliminated them completely. What emerged became legendary in agriculture and construction, yet sparked one of diesel engineering's most heated debates. The reality behind this machine is stranger than most people realize. The company that invented it all, understanding why Deutz would create such an unconventional engine requires understanding their origins. Deutz wasn't some upstart manufacturer chasing attention. They were founding fathers of internal combustion itself. The company began in 1864 when Nicholas Otto and Eugen Langen established operations. Otto, creator of the four-stroke auto cycle, built engines that revolutionized power generation. Significantly, Rudolf Diesel himself worked at Deutz's Cologne facility before developing his revolutionary compression ignition engine. Connected to two of history's greatest engine pioneers, Deutz built credentials few manufacturers could match. By the early 1900s, Deutz engines were driving factories, mills, and industrial equipment throughout Europe. They specialized in durable stationary and industrial power plants capable of continuous operation for extended periods. When Germany reconstructed after World War II, Deutz engines powered tractors, construction machinery, and transportation equipment that enabled national rebuilding. As the company grew through the mid-20th century, their engines earned reputations for surviving brutal environments. Deutz became a worldwide brand, delivering power units to Africa, South America, and the Middle East, where dust, extreme heat, and contaminated water destroyed traditional designs. In America, farmers encountered the brand during the 1970s and 80s through Deutz Alice tractors carrying German engines beneath American bodywork. This extended history of innovation and field-proven durability established the foundation for Deutz's most audacious engineering decision in the 1960s. While most manufacturers refined conventional water-cooled architecture, Deutz engineers leveraged their worldwide experience and posed a revolutionary question. Could a diesel engine function without any radiator whatsoever? By the 1960s, Deutz launched the 912 series, with the F4L 912 rapidly becoming their signature engine. What distinguished it wasn't horsepower figures or advanced technology, it was eliminating everything farmers expected on a diesel. No radiator, no water pump, no antifreeze, and none of the hoses or gauges operators considered standard equipment. The entire liquid cooling infrastructure defining other diesels simply didn't exist. The F4L92 was a four-cylinder, naturally aspirated diesel, displacing 3.77 liters, typically delivering between 46 and 73 horsepower, depending on application and configuration. But its revolutionary feature was heat rejection methodology. Rather than pumping coolant through a radiator, Dotes engineers cast enormous fins directly into cylinder barrels and heads, creating massive surface area for air-based heat transfer. A industrial duty fan, mounted directly on the crankshaft, drove air across those fins with consistent force. This architecture eliminated dozens of potential failure modes, making the 912 more dependable than anything competitors offered. The fins weren't merely functional, they made a statement. Each cast iron or aluminum ridge was engineered to capture airflow and dissipate thermal energy as efficiently as possible. The cylinders bristled with these projections, giving the engine a aggressive, almost exposed appearance. The surrounding sheet metal shroud channeled fan-driven air over every critical surface, ensuring uniform cooling across all cylinders. To operators, it resembled something mounted on an aircraft nose rather than under tractor sheet metal. That appearance was accompanied by a distinctive acoustic signature. The cooling fan generated a high-pitched whine that pierced through the deeper diesel rumble giving the 912 an unmistakable sound profile. Mechanics claimed you could identify a Deutz by sound long before seeing the fins. For some, that noise became synonymous with reliability. For others, it reminded them this wasn't a conventional engine. Initial skepticism was inevitable. Farmers had trusted water-cooled engines for generations, and they understood how to maintain radiators with basic tools and knowledge. The concept of a radiator-less diesel felt dangerous even foolish, but the fins validated their design. In sub-zero conditions, there was no coolant to freeze and crack a block. In extreme heat, there was no boiling radiator to disable a tractor. The airflow system, despite its simplicity, had been engineered to survive conditions that destroyed conventional engines. Dotes wasn't taking blind risks. The company had spent decades observing engines fail in factories, mines, and construction environments, and they understood where vulnerabilities existed. Radiators clogged with contamination, Hoses failed under pressure, 
and water pumps quit without warning. By removing all those components and depending entirely on cast fins and forced airflow, Dutes eliminated entire failure categories. What initially appeared as a weakness, the absence of a cooling system, was revealed as one of the 9-1-2's greatest assets, engineered for extreme endurance. The F4L9 TWO powered an remarkable range of equipment, from tractors and combines to bulldozers, workboats, and even military vehicles. This adaptability wasn't accidental. Deutz engineered the engine with conservative ratings and components that could withstand punishment across industries. The four-cylinder block, modest compression ratios, and oversized bearings gave the 912 the endurance to operate continuously in conditions that disabled competitors. Agriculture was its core market, and here the 912 rapidly established its reputation. In Africa's brutal heat, water-cooled tractors frequently overheated when radiators became clogged with airborne dust. The Deutz continued operating, its fins rejecting heat with no fragile plumbing to rupture or corrode. In Northern Europe and Canada, there was no coolant to freeze and destroy the block. Farmers realized the 920 wasn't just simpler to maintain. It functioned in climates where water-cooled engines failed completely. That ruggedness extended beyond agriculture. In construction, the 912 drove bulldozers, excavators, cranes, and generators, where radiators were constant vulnerabilities. Debris impact or clogged cores could disable a water-cooled machine, but the Deutz kept running with nothing more than routine oil and filter maintenance. Operators appreciated its independence from delicate cooling components, especially at remote locations where downtime was expensive and replacement parts required weeks to obtain. Marine applications proved another ideal environment. On small vessels and workboats, conventional raw water cooling systems were vulnerable to corrosion, mineral buildup, and blockages that could disable an engine at sea. By eliminating seawater pumps and complex plumbing entirely, the 912 gave operators a power plant that ran reliably with reduced maintenance and lower risk. Its simplicity made it popular in commercial fishing fleets, harbor workboats, and small coastal cargo vessels. Owners valued the fact that the engine didn't depend on seawater quality. Military forces also recognized the advantages. The 912's lack of liquid cooling made it less vulnerable in combat situations, where radiators could be penetrated by bullets, shrapnel, or debris thrown by vehicle tracks. The air-cooled design meant fewer hoses and pumps to service under field conditions, which translated into higher operational readiness. Versions of the 912 equipped armored personnel carriers, troop transports, and auxiliary equipment used by NATO and other armies during the Cold War. In desert deployments, the absence of radiators eliminated a major failure point as sand and grit constantly clogged water-cooled systems. In Arctic environments, it removed the requirement to transport antifreeze in bulk, one less logistical challenge. Part of the engine's longevity also stemmed from internal details. The 912 used replaceable dry liners, a proven Bosch mechanical fuel injection system, and a full-flow oil filtration circuit that controlled wear particles. The fan-driven airflow covered every finned surface equalizing temperatures and eliminating hotspots. With clean air, fuel, and oil, these engines routinely accumulated tens of thousands of operating hours. Perhaps most remarkably, the 912 often outlived the equipment surrounding it. Tractors and construction machines would deteriorate, rust, or become obsolete, while their Deutz engines still had years of service remaining. A thriving secondary market developed as Mechanics extracted 912s from dead machines and installed them in new applications. Their straightforward design meant diagnosis was rarely complicated, and most repairs could be completed with basic tools by a competent operator. Stories circulated of engines starting after years of abandonment in fields or storage buildings, reinforcing the legend of an engine that simply refused to die. Regulations killed what abuse couldn't. The 912's downfall wasn't mechanical failure. It was regulatory evolution and market transformation. By the late 1970s into the 1980s, emissions and noise regulations were tightening across North America and Europe. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the European Economic Community were establishing limits that had never existed previously. Engines that had once been evaluated solely on durability and uptime were now tested in controlled laboratories with precision instruments. What made the 9-tool reliable in field service became liabilities under these new conditions. Air-cooled diesels inherently operated at higher temperatures than water-cooled designs, and those elevated combustion temperatures generated greater quantities of nitrogen oxides. Unlike unburned hydrocarbons or particulate matter, 
which created visible smoke, NOx was invisible but far more strictly regulated. Controlling it required precise combustion timing and, increasingly, exhaust after treatment. The 912's simple mechanical injection and limited ability to manage cylinder temperatures meant it couldn't maintain NOx within new legal boundaries. Competitors with water-cooled blocks and electronically controlled injection could stabilize temperatures sufficiently to comply. Noise regulations became another challenge. The 902's direct drive fan produced a piercing, high-pitched whine that was unmistakable at job sites. Farmers and operators had long considered it the sound of dependability, but decibel meters told a different story. As governments began imposing workplace noise limits, often under pressure from labor organizations, Tractors and construction equipment had to be evaluated for sound exposure inside cabs and at operator stations. Water-cooled rivals could hide behind radiators and sound-dampening panels. The 912's exposed fins and fan made it nearly impossible to conceal. Fuel efficiency also came under scrutiny. Rising oil prices in the late 1970s forced buyers to examine operating costs more carefully. And here the 9992's simplicity worked against. The cooling fan consumed power continuously even when maximum cooling wasn't required, draining several critical horsepower from output. Combined with the hotter operating cycle, thermal efficiency lagged behind newer water-cooled engines designed with tighter tolerances. For farmers and fleet managers calculating costs per operating hour, that difference mattered. Dutes attempted to adapt. Engineers experimented with turbocharging, intercooling, and even muffling systems designed to quiet the fan and exhaust. They also developed the Series 913, a close relative of the 92 with improved cooling airflow and updated fuel injection intended to meet early emission standards. It bought the company additional time, but the trajectory was clear. Every new feature that made the engines cleaner or quieter also made them more complex and expensive, eroding the original advantage of simplicity. The challenge wasn't just regulators, it was customers. By the 1980s, buyers expected more than indestructibility. They wanted engines that were quieter, cleaner, and cheaper to operate. And they were willing to sacrifice some mechanical ruggedness for those benefits. Cab comfort was improving, farms were consolidating, and equipment buyers were thinking in terms of fuel cost per acre, not just whether an engine could survive punishment. The rugged simplicity that had once defined Deutz's appeal now appeared outdated compared to electronically controlled water-cooled engines from Cummins, Perkins, and John Deere. The 912 didn't disappear because it was unreliable. It disappeared because the industry's priorities changed. The same engine perfectly suited to the requirements of the 1960s and 70s was misaligned with the demands of the 1980s and beyond. Even with the 913's improvements, the concept of large-scale air-cooled diesels was being regulated out of mainstream markets, Today, thousands of 912 engines continue operating in tractors, boats, and stationary power applications, proof of how well-engineered they were. But their legacy isn't just longevity. It's a reminder that even the most rugged, practical engine can become obsolete when the world transforms around. The insane truth was that the 912 wasn't destroyed by mechanical failure. It was destroyed by progress.